Hi, my name is Kai and today I want to start a new series on my YouTube channel. Because we as electrical designer need to select every day various sensors for different applications, I want to talk a little bit more in detail about sensors. If you like this idea, please drop a like and if you have own ideas for sensors which you want to like to present it here on my YouTube channel, please write it down in the comment. And now we start with the first sensor. First of all, what is a capacitive sensor? A capacitive sensor is mostly a switching sensor that can detect materials in the near of its active zone because these materials are influencing its electric field. You can see this now here in a short animation. The main advantages of capacitive sensors are that they are completely independent of the color and also of the surface of the detection material. Besides, they are able to detect even through walls under certain conditions. Besides, they are very insensitive to contaminations in the air, for example, dust. And what is also very important, they work completely independent of any kind of background light. Now, what should be considered when you are using a capacitive sensor? First of all, you need to consider that there are maybe changes in the humidity or the size of the objects you want to detect. Besides, there are typical switching frequencies that have to be considered. Of course, you need also to care about the distances between the sensors. And a very important point is the switching distance and the material-specific dielectric constant. But what this is um, will be learned later on. For capacitive sensors, there are three main areas of applications. First of all, the level control. You can see now here a short picture, um, also an example from the packaging industry. In this picture, you see two sensors, one on the bottom and one on the top, and they are detecting the upper and the lower le filling levels in order to start and to stop the refilling process. Another main application is the content control. In this picture, you see also an example from the packaging industry. And here, the capacitive sensor is used in order to detect if there are really conflicts in every package or not. And last but not least, the third main application is the presence control. Here you can see an example from the solar industry. Now, in order to understand the basic principles of a capacitive sensor, we need to learn first of all more about the functionality of a plate capacitor. How does a plate capacitor work? If we apply a voltage to a plate capacitor, then the electrons will move from the negative to the positive pole. And therefore, there will be a negative charge on the one plate and a positive charge on the other plate. And this load difference between the two plates will generate an electric field. And the shift of the electrons will end if the voltage in the capacitor is as high as the voltage from the voltage source. What is now the capacity? The capacity is the storage capacity of a capacitor for electric charges. The physical formula is load per voltage. And the capacity is influenced by the distance between the plates, the surface of the plates, and also by the dielectric constant of a material that is inside the capacitor. Now let's go one step deeper into the topic dielectric constant. The dielectric constant is a specific material property. There are different examples for air, we normally have the lowest dielectrical constants. For water, for example, we have the highest dielectrical constants. If we bring now a material into the electric field of the capacitor, then the molecules in the material will align in the opposite direction to the electric field inside of the capacitor. The reason for this is that same charges repel each other and different charges attract each other. And this alignment of the molecules in the material will lead to a weakened electrical field. And then the voltage will decrease. And if we remember 
the formula for the capacity, then the capacity is load per voltage. And if the voltage will decrease, then of course the capacity will increase. And this is the basic principle that is also used by a capacitive sensor. Now what does this mean for a capacitive sensor? In the both pictures here, you can see on the left side a flush sensor. Here you have the electric field and the active zone only on the front of the sensor. And on the right picture, you see a non-flush sensor. Here you have the electric field not only on the front, but also on the sides. In the end, a capacitive sensor can be understood as a widened plate capacitor. This is why we have learned so much about the plate ca capacitor. We can also adjust the sensitivity of the sensor, for example, with a potentiometer. If we bring now an object into the electric field of the sensor, then the capacity will change. And if the capacity reaches the level that we um, already have adjusted, then there will be a switching signal. And this is the basic principle of a capacitive sensor. You can see this here also in a short animation. What does this mean now for the switching distance? For capacitive sensors, we normally have a switching distance of a few centimeters. But like we've already learned, different kind of materials have different influences on the capacity of the sensor and therefore there will be also different switching distances. If we want to calculate now the real switching distance, we need first of all the nominal operating distance. This will be found in the datasheet of the sensor. And we need the correction factor of the specific material that we want to detect. This correction factor is normally between 0 and 1 and is the highest for water. We have already learned that for water the dielectrical constant will be the highest, therefore also the correction factor will be here very high. You can see here also other examples and what you can remember is the higher the share of the water is inside in the material and the lower the share of the air is inside the material, the higher will be the switching distance and the other way around. Now to calculate the real switching distance, you need to multiply the nominal operating distance with the correction factor of the detection material. So last but not least, I want to give you some information about the basic mounting principles for capacitive sensors. Depending on the application, you can use either a flush or a non-flush sensor. The flush sensor can be used for installations without media contact. Here we have learned the active area is only on the front and this kind of sensor can be used for detections through materials. For example, if we want to detect a filling level inside of a container. But be careful, we need to consider three things. First of all, the wall should not contain any kind of metal. Besides, it is very important that the dielectric constant of the detection material is higher than the dielectrical constant of the wall material. And the third point is that the distance between the sensor and the wall should be as small as possible. If at least one of these requirements cannot be fulfilled, then you can also use another type of sensor, a non-flush sensor. This can be used for installations with media contact. But here you need to consider that it is necessary to have a hole in the wall if you want to use this kind of installation. Okay, then let's sum up the main facts for capacitive sensors. First of all, with this kind of sensor technology, it is possible to detect materials completely independent of their color and their surface, even through container walls. And disadvantages are very useful for applications with level presence or content control. Besides, it's very important to consider that the switching distance will vary depending on the material-specific dielectric constant. So for very dry materials, for example sugar, the material-specific dielectric constant is very low and therefore the switching distance will be low. 
and for materials with a high share of water, the switching distance will be higher. Thanks, Tanita, for your presentation and the information about the application from a capacitive sensor. Um, one question from my side, what do you mean exactly with the switching frequency? Yes, <laughs> the switching frequency is um, the maximum number of switching operations per second. So that means in the end that it indicates how many times per second the sensor switches off and on again. Okay, thanks. Uh, one additional question, is it possible to detect gas with a capacitive sensor? No, under normal air pressure conditions, it will be um, very difficult for the capacitive sensor to detect uh, gases because the density in the gas is so low. And as we already learned from the presentation, the dielectric constant of air is one, so it has no influence on the capacity of the sensor. And so it won't be possible to detect gases with a normal switching capacitive sensor. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you very much. So I hope we could clarify all the questions about capacitive sensors. If you have further questions about a capacitive sensor, please write a comment. We try to answer it as soon as possible. If you like our video, please drop a like and don't forget to subscribe and push the notification. See you next time from Kai and Tanita.